now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York, it's the Ramble with me. I'm Alex, and we'll be here until midnight tonight. Out to California we go, and the dulcet tones of Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hey, Alex. How are you? Every time I good, say good. hello, Larry, I, I'm reminded of a failed sitcom from the, what, 60s, something like that? 70s, the uh, great McLean Stevenson. Yeah, it lasted what a couple of weeks or something, and then it was I think so. I think he uh, he had left Mash to do that, which turned out to be a horrible <laughs> yeah. mistake. And Mash was still on. It was know. huge, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how you? But he he was a very funny guy. Oh yeah, yeah. But he, I don't think I don't I think he made a bad decision. Okay. It happens. I've got a lifetime full of them. So. <laughs> Well, what, bad decisions you've made? I think so, yeah. Like what? Uh, well, when I was a young comic, I probably should have gone to L.A. and not stayed in San Francisco. But Yeah, what you did is you got your reputation in San Francisco, and then you went to L.A. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I stayed here in the... San Francisco is a very small pond, as you know. So. Well, I made some similar mistakes. Um there was a point at which I was supposed to go to WJFK in outside of Washington, D.C., and it was for Mel Carmazan, who was the guy who made Howard Stern what he is today, okay? And uh, I turned it down uh, because I felt he was trying to get me out of San Francisco to make way for Howard Stern, which was, are you still there? No, he's not there. All of a sudden, it says that the whole call was canceled. Let me call him again. Okay, we're back. Yeah, wow. You were just, uh, where was I? <laughs> you were talking, you were you had WJFK Mel Carmazan. Yeah, and uh, I thought he was trying to get me out of San Francisco to make way for Howard Stern, which was probably one of the things he was trying to do, I guess, you know. Uh, and uh, I saw I didn't trust it. And he was asking me to leave before I, uh, to quit before he could hire me. Oh. And, <laughs> and I didn't want to take that chance because if I quit at, at uh, uh, Live 105 and then I called him and said, okay, I quit, he could easily say, well, too bad, I don't want you. Okay, and then I'm out there with my pants down. Yeah, that you couldn't have done that. Yeah, but later on I found out he was the world's most honest guy. I mean, the reason he was doing that is he didn't want to get sued by Live 105 oh. for stealing talent. Okay, so uh, I but I didn't realize that I had heard horrible things about Mel Carmazan, and uh, I just didn't do it. You know, I didn't go, and I, that was one of my big career mistakes. So, well, he was a he was a big guy, man. He was running radio. He, yeah, well, he came in. They bought the station we were at, Live One Hundred and Five, and that's when I was kind of forced out to leave. And then they put Johnny Steele in there for a short amount of time in order to cleanse the palate of San Francisco, right, so right. they could make way for Howard Stern. That was really what that was all about. So. Which they did. Yep, which they did. And San Francisco radio went downhill that ever since. Well, I think radio in general has just gone downhill from there ever since. Yeah, it was. It would have died anyway. But yeah, I mean, radio now. I would not buy a radio station. Okay, as much as I love radio, I would not buy a radio station. It's just well. It wasn't that long ago. People were 
buying and flipping radio stations and making tens of millions of dollars. Yeah, but they, 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 that tens of millions of dollars, they had to get rid of a lot of those stations. They couldn't afford the upkeep. You know, you have one company, Clear Channel, who bought 1,200 radio stations. Now, think of the cost of maintaining 1,200 radio stations, especially when a certain amount of those radio stations that you bought, because you bought whole groups, weren't money makers to begin with. If you bought nothing but money makers, that might be worth it, but it didn't. You know, for every uh, great radio station you bought, you got a turkey. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it was just a, a bad time for radio, and that's what killed radio. It was Actually, it was the uh, 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 president we loved, uh, Clinton, who... Oh, the uh, Telecommunications Act, yeah. Yep, the Telecommunications Act, which allowed these people... In the old days, you could only own, I think it was, I may be wrong, it may, no, it was six, I think, six AM, six FM, and six TVs, and that was it. You couldn't buy more than that, and you couldn't buy more than one in a market. In other words, and you couldn't own, if you owned a newspaper, you couldn't own all three, you could only own two in a market, like you could own the AM, the FM, or you could own the TV and the FM or whatever, but you couldn't go own all three. So there were rules like that. And when he signed the Telecommunications Act back then, which was for an entirely different reason, and I can't remember what it was now, but the reason he was signing it, he didn't see what it was going to do to the diversification of radio in a market. And so consequently, he... Uh, um, Ruin, literally ruined the the broadcasting business by doing yeah, that. Yeah, set up a bunch of monopolies. And oh, monopolies! Come on, twelve hundred radio stations across the country? Are you kidding me? Isn't that a monopoly? Yeah. Uh, there are some TV groups. Um, Sinclair, I think, is the one that comes to mind. That is a right wing group, uh, and they own more TV stations than anybody else in the country. You know, and and when you have t when you own a lot of TV stations and you're a right wing organization, you have an outlet to people that is very influential because people believe TV. You know, so anyway, that's what happened, and that's what ruined the business. It wasn't Alex <laughs> Bennett leaving San Francisco, although I'd like and to think that it ruined radio in San Francisco. And <laughs> we have whatever happened to Mel. Mel Carmazan, I don't know where Mel yeah. is now. He uh, he came was it, I want he wound up Sirius XM. He was my boss there, and that's where I suddenly realized that I had made a big, big mistake years earlier. Uh, and uh, because he's a very nice guy, loved talent, you know, revered talent. Uh, so I he always, had a good eye for talent. Well, I always talk about the story of going into the uh, into the break room and the, uh, a couple of days after we almost went under and. I wanted to, I saw him and I wanted to thank him and I went up and I said, Hi Mel, let me introduce myself. I'm Alex Bennett. He says, Of course I know who you are, Alex. I'm a fan. Uh, and anybody who says that, how can you hate him? You know? Yeah. I mean, it was like the time Howard Stern came to visit me in my studios and he was really mad over what I had said about one of his people, okay, who had done some kind of stunt uh, but I won't go into what that was. And he comes into my studio, and I, he, I, I, he, I do a thing with him, and I completely charm him over. And he goes back into his studio, and his uh, newswoman, <laughs> what's her name? Uh, I can't remember her name now. Uh, Robin. Robin. Robin Quivers says to him, Gee, you were so nice to him. He said, well, I walked into the studio. He shook my hand and said, "Hi, Howard. Great to meet you." He said, "How am I going to go from there?" You know, he completely disarmed me. So I just That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Yeah. And so we had our little discussion. He walked out, and I was the only show up until that point. I don't know what's happened since then on Sirius XM that he ever went to visit. You know. So I felt privileged. It didn't help me to stay there because a couple of months later they dumped me. But, you know. 
<laughs> and he could have saved me, too. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. But he didn't. So, anyway. Oh, that's right. He's got a lot of power. That's right. He's got... Well, he's had, he had a lot of power at, at Sirius XM. Plus, he had two channels. He had another channel that he only ran reruns on. He could have put me on there, you know? But he didn't. So, anyway. Fuck Howard Stern. Well, he was... Uh... Didn't he grow up listening to you? I don't know if he grew up listening to me, but he certainly was influenced by me. There's no question right. about it. He's even admitted that to people I know in private conversation. Okay? So, whatever. You know. Am I bitter? A tad. Wasn't that your line? <laughs> Wasn't that your line? That was my line, yeah. yeah. I, had, I actually had little buttons made up in 1986. <laughs> what did it say? Bitter oh a tad. Oh a tad. Oh, bitter oh a tad. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, I, uh, you know, my bitter, nah, you know, I've had a great career. I can't. You've had a great career, and uh, I'm trying to think, who's, uh, who has become as big in radio as someone like Stern? That, uh, any other names? Not really. You know, there's a guy here in New York who just celebrated 50 years on New York radio. His name is Jim Kerr. And I was there the day Jim Kerr started work in New York radio. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I, as a talent, I, I he was a nice guy, really nice guy. As a talent, I didn't really, wasn't bowled over by him. But he has stayed in radio for 50 years in New York City. Meanwhile, I had a hard time holding a job here. You know? So what's the difference? Well, I guess the difference is I'm the guy who tried to break the mold and tried to change the way the game was played, and people who played it the way it was supposed to be played were here for 50 years. You get my <laughs> That's point? impressive. <laughs> but, you, but you get my point? In other words, if you play the game right, you can stay in, in here for 50 years. But I always played a different game than that. I wasn't happy with that, you know, so. Anyway, uh, my regrets in life. So you any other regrets? Any other regrets? Um, marrying my first wife. I think. Uh, how long did that last? Very short time. I I married her because she got pregnant, and then on our wedding night she had a miscarriage. That's the story <laughs> of my life. Okay. Uh, and Did that cost you money? or No, it didn't cost just... me any money. I didn't have any money at the time. I was in the Navy uh, by that time and for two years. So I didn't have any money. She never came after the money. And uh, I can't remember who divorced who. I think she divorced me, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, my second wife, Ronnie, she divorced me. Okay. See how popular I am? Uh-huh. Uh, and then my third wife, uh, Susan, I divorced her. But only after many years of not divorcing her, but being living apart. Because I, you know, she had pro certain problems and I kind of support, you know, tried to support her during that time. And then I just decided nothing was going to change. So I, I uh, went and I filed for divorce. And I bet you never heard a judge say this in a divorce case against the male in the case. Um, when it came time to, for the judge to say, the judge said, it's time for me to tell you, uh, you know, what kind of settlement we're going to have here. And I've decided that uh, Mrs. Schwarzman, or whatever her name was at the time, uh, isn't owed anything because he's been paying for her for years now to try and get her to clean up and do this and do that. He said, you've done more than any husband is required wow. to do, so you don't owe her anything. Have Jesus. Ever... Well, that's, yeah, because men usually get screwed in those courts. <laughs> yeah, that shows you what a nice guy I am, okay? <laughs> you know, but that was that was, the judge actually said that. You know, made a big point out of it and then said to my wife, if I were you, I'd get my life together. You know, he said, because he isn't going to, uh, he isn't going to help you anymore. You know, 
Yeah, that'd be very annoying to have to pay alimony. Well, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, although in this day and age, if she's richer than you are, you can probably get money out of her. So. Yeah, I know some people that have. You know, so anyway, so um, yeah, and and Marjorie and I have no desire to divorce. You know. Uh, we we uh, put up with each other, suffer each other a lot, as most people do with each other. That's you know that's the way marriages survive is you don't give up on them simply because you have an argument. And you got a big space to get you big to keep you apart when oh, you. Oh, I'd never have to see her all day if I don't want to. You know. See, if you lived in a studio apartment, you probably would have been divorced by now. Oh, one bedroom. I, we'd be divorced by now. Yeah. No, I don't think so, though. We're just, you know, we're too old to get divorced. It's ridiculous at this point in our, our lives. So she's your fourth marriage. She's my fourth, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I got it right, finally. You know, I keep, I had, a, I had a joke, I'm going to keep doing it till I get it right. And I got it right. Yeah. So, what can I say? Now, you've I never been it. married. No, I met, uh, I had a little bit part in a film a few years ago with, uh, remember Lorenzo Lamas? Uh, Lorenzo Lamas, yes. He was a super nice guy, and uh, I was kind of surprised he was work. Had been, he'd been on a couple of big episodic shows in the 80s, and uh, surprised he was working on this film. And uh, the director told me, oh, he's been married six times. That's why he's <laughs> Married paying a lot time. of alimony, but uh, well, you know, I mean, I I would imagine in show business, you either are like you, you don't get married, or you're married once, but most of the time you're married many times. Because as a performer, there are too many temptations to come your way, you know. Uh, uh huh. So, uh, you know, I mean, I had too many temptations coming my way. You know, I, I, I married uh, Ronnie, my second wife, and uh, we were married in Houston, Texas, and uh, we got divorced eventually in New York City. Uh, and the reason was that, you know, I got to say this about myself, you know, I, I was an insecure kid. You know, I, I never felt I was a guy who had his way with women, you know, and so on. I was always, I felt the ugly kid in the corner that nobody wanted. So when somebody wanted me, I immediately fell in love with them. You know, it's like that old joke about, well, it's the old joke that Groucho had, that I wouldn't become a member of any club that would want me as a member. I wouldn't want to join any club that would have me as a member. Well, my yeah. my feeling was the exact opposite I'd marry any woman who felt she wanted to have something to do with me, <laughs> you know, because that's how insecure I was. But then as I got into the radio business and I moved up in markets, more and more women started coming on to me, not because I was any better looking than I was or had any better personality, but because I was on the radio, you know. So I had a lot of opportunities I never had before. And then I had this while I was married to Ronnie. And she was not the beneficiary of this, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I was a pretty horrible husband. I used to cheat like crazy. You know? <laughs> well, you know, when I meet a woman, she goes, hey, you want to go fuck? I go, yeah, sure. Go, let's go right now. <laughs> and, you know. Uh, Be rude to say no. <laughs> yeah, right. So... You know, I mean, it 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 was um, uh, it, it was not a time to marry me, and when you're in show business, I mean, you know it from being in show business yourself. I mean, Larry Bubbles Brown, you are not the most handsome creature in the in the in the country, right? Right. And you're not uh, the uh, the the most uh, affable when it comes to wooing a woman, right? <laughs> right. Okay. And yet you got laid a lot, didn't you? Uh, certainly more than I did before. <laughs> right, right, exactly. That's the reason we never leave show business. We'll never get laid again. <laughs> yeah. Am I right? 
Yeah, and I think that's why maybe that's why people never ever want to retire from show business. Yeah, but also the the uh, you know like being married four times for me, that's not unusual in show business. No. Yeah. You know? um, how many bachelors are there in show business? How many what? Bachelors. The only per like you know David Spade, I don't think has ever been married. David Spade hasn't been married. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. You haven't been married. I have, but nobody knows who I am. I'm trying to think of people that were well known that never got married. Yeah, but I mean, um, you never got married. Anybody else we know that never got married? I can't think of any. Yeah. Yeah. Do you sometimes does it bother you you didn't get married? Oh, not at all. I would uh, hate. I I didn't even like being in a relationship. So. What what didn't you like Why? about being in a relationship? Felt like I was trapped. I was on someone else's schedule. I just really didn't like it. Wow. And the sex always got boring after about a month. So. Yeah. So you, you how, feel like you said too much temptation. <laughs> so you didn't have any long term relationships. I had a couple last a couple of years, and that was uh, yeah. That was, yeah. Because I never even met you with any, you know, you, you never introduced somebody you were with, oh, this is my girlfriend, or this is so-and-so that I'm currently seeing. You never did. Yeah, I never brought them to your shows, because there's always so many women at their shows, I didn't want to be cock-blocked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See what I'm saying? That's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't have gotten married and not cheated, right? Oh, I don't think so, no. Yeah, because that isn't in your DNA. No. Yeah. I have a very romantic sense, you know. I'm I I like being in a relationship. You know, I mean really? I had that uh, one Well I guess most people do, yeah. I had that one relationship with a woman who shall not be named here that I had for what, twelve years, something like that? Mm hmm. You remember her? You yeah. Know? And that relationship was on and off and on and off and on and off, you know. What I liked about it being on and off, on and off, on and off, when it, when it was on, I could be very loyal. Then a couple of months later, it would be off, and I could go out and screw like crazy, and then we'd get back together, and I'd be okay, you know. And then we'd break up again, and I'd go out and screw like crazy, right? So I had the benefit of both worlds, as it were. So. Well, I think a lot of people in entertainment uh, probably have open relationships. Well, yeah and no. You know, you, there are some people that stay married to each other and have wonderful marriages, you know, and are very successful in show business. Tom Hanks, look at him. He's been married forever. I don't think he, I bet he's never cheated on his wife. I, I may be wrong, but I, I just, <laughs> I just sense <laughs> You never it. know. Well, I it's always the it. ones you least suspect. Yeah. I mean, you, you hear about people breaking up and then getting back together, and probably the reason was somebody cheated. You know. Yeah. Which I never saw as a reason to get divorced. You know, if my wife went out tomorrow and had sex with somebody else, I'd go, okay, I hope you had a good time. As long as she came back to me, that's all that matters. Uh huh. You know? Does that make sense? Of course it yeah, does. You're very forgiving, yes. Yeah, it would make sense to you as it does to me. Because that's our DNA, okay? So, um, but whereas some people kill their spouse over that. <laughs> well, not that that's a bad reason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I asked Marjorie once, "Have you ever felt like you wanted to kill me?" <laughs> and as a joke, as a joke, she said every day. But she said, "No, never." You know. I said, have you ever in this relationship thought to yourself, I got to get a divorce. I got to get out of this. And she's not once. And I, really? I feel the wow. same way. Not once. You know. Uh, so you guys are a good couple. We're good friends. And I think that's the most important thing. You know, if you can hang around with somebody you like and that is on the same wavelength as you, then you got a good thing going. Right. Can she make you laugh? Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, 
One day, I guess we'll never be able to get a wedding invitation from Larry Bubbles Brown. Then. No, I, I don't guess, think I so. <laughs> that's out of the question. And what's good, when you die, there will not be a, a crying widow at your graveside. You know, no, I, so. I told someone the only reason I would get married would be if it was a 95-year-old woman from Tiburon with a shaky stent. <laughs> Changes the will, and, and, and she's got to be wealthy too, right? Yeah, <laughs> got to be very wealthy. Hey, Someone listen, on the last leg. We're running out of time here. Any place you're playing, you want to talk about? I will be at the. Uh, uh, well, I just worked with him this weekend in Santa Barbara. I'll be at the uh, maiden May ninth at the Netflix big the big festival they have in L.A. I'm doing some show down there or something. Oh, that's very good. That's a big yeah. It's uh, he put me on it, so you have to get in by invite, I guess. So. Yeah, who put you on it? Felipe. Felipe. Yeah, Esparza, mm -hmm. which is a comedian he works with all the time. Right, right. Anyway, I gotta go, and I'll talk to you okay. uh, next week. See you How's next that? week. Bye bye, Larry. Bye bye, Larry Bubbles Brown. That's his name. Don't wear it out. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, there he was, Larry Bubbles Brown, and here I am, Larry Bubbles Alex. I don't know, whatever the name is. I don't know. I just uh, Today's just not one of those days for me. I'm not having many of those days anyway, so, you know. Uh, but I've been um, um, I know, just depressed today. Just really depressed. Um, I had to uh, I had to send back a in order to get this uh, this inheritance I'm supposed to get. Uh, I had to. They sent me a letter. And they said, sign this, have it notarized, and mail it back to us. So I went down. I had it notarized. It was at UPS. So I said, can you mail this from here? And they said, yeah, we got a, mail, a little mailbox here, and we send the mail out every day. And they, they put it, they notarized it, put it in there, and sent it back. And I wrote the, the place, of, oh, I think it was on uh, Thursday, and said, hey, uh, did you get, uh, my, any, uh, get my letter? Did you get my returned thing? And he said, not yet. And this was like on uh, on uh, Thursday that I wrote it, and they wrote back on Friday, not yet, but maybe it'll come in later today. And I haven't heard from them, uh, although they do close down at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Fridays. But it just depresses me because, you know, so many things go wrong these days, and it, it's nothing that's my fault. You know, I do everything right, and I do it with great, uh, rapidity. I mean, I, I got this thing back to them the day I got it, you know. And I would just think that everything would just go really smoothly. And who knows, maybe it's in their office and it's uh, on somebody else's desk. I don't know. But then they can't, they can't send out the, the, the money to all the people until everybody who has, uh, is a beneficiary has signed these things. So uh, if they, uh, if they don't want to go try and find my thing fine you know everybody will have to wait for their uh, for their inheritance but anyway it just, that just depressed me I you know because I've been living with this thing for almost a year now and having to deal with it and I'm sick and tired of it I'm just sick and tired of it you know I mean um, th this should have been handled a long time ago so anyway, uh, so I, I'm just very depressed, and uh, uh, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just tired of everything, you know. Even this, you know, this which used to give me great joy, uh, doesn't give me that much joy any longer. I have to admit that. Uh, and the only reason I do it is because there are some nice people who call the program, and I enjoy talking with them. So that that kind of works, okay. But nevertheless. Still, I, uh, uh, you know, I'm just getting, I'm getting a bit tired of it all. I'm getting tired of the fact that, like, for instance, right now, there are only two people waiting to come on. They happen to be two very good people, but there are only two people waiting to come on. 
It used to be that we would get at least 10 people or something like that, and we don't anymore. And I just think that, uh, you know, I've, I've constantly threatened that I would bring this to an end. But I think maybe it's time. You know, I love the Monday show. That one I won't change. And also because that one gets, we get like 14, 15 people a show calling that particular program. Uh, so, you know, why shouldn't I just do that where I get people who want to talk to me, you know? Maybe move this show to just uh, doing it on Friday nights and um, starting it at 10 and running two interviews uh, before I actually go to the callers and leave it at that, you know. But I still want to do the thing with Lori, and I still like doing the thing with Bubs, and I like doing the thing with, uh, with Albert and with uh, Chuck Farnham. Uh, so somehow I have to figure out how to keep those things going because I like doing those, and uh, still maybe back off of doing this uh, because uh, it's just it, we're not getting the kind of support that we should be getting. We got, a, we got some the people who do call are very enthusiastic about calling, and they're there most nights, which is terrific. But uh, I don't know, you know. I just uh, like tonight. I said to myself, "Gee, maybe I just won't do the show," you know. And and I've never felt that way. Uh, and um, uh, I'm. Uh, it, and it's just all these other things that are depressing me. What's depressing me is also my inability to really walk any long distances. Um, and the fact that, you know, I have this money coming to me, okay? I'm not going to say how much or whatever, uh, but it's something that would make it possible for us to do a lot of traveling. And I've been waiting so long for this money, I kept thinking about, am I going to be unable to enjoy it by the time it gets to me? And every day that it uh that things were held up like through this thing with this letter not getting back to them uh the more i begin to think ah hey, you know maybe i uh you know that that, that uh, it just it starts to depress me because it, i just didn't at the it, towards the middle of this year i went you know i'm starting to fall apart i'm wondering if i'm going to be able to do all the things I want to do and enjoy all the things I want to do. And Marjorie isn't that well either. She has these dizzy spells and she's, uh, you know, she's got her problems. And uh, we'd like to be able to take some time off and go do stuff while there's still time to take time off and do stuff. So, you know, um, I don't know, you know. But I'm planning on buying new, a lot of new equipment here for the studio. So what am I doing that for if I'm not going to do shows? So probably I will wind up still doing shows. But it's, I'm just uh, just gotten very depressed about my uh, my health. It's it's not that there's anything physically wrong with me outside of the fact that I have leukemia. All right, but it's it's a form of leukemia that's they don't even treat it until it starts having symptoms, and I haven't had any symptoms. But, you know, I would like to feel better. I mean, this thing about falling is really getting to me because that's the part that frightens me. And um, it frightens me because I'm getting to the point where I'm afraid to go walk outdoors. You know, the other day we had to walk up to Marjorie's bank because we had to do some business up there, putting me on her account. And uh, we had to walk up there, and I was afraid to walk up there because of the, of the fall I took the other day. Two of the falls I've taken are, are on the way to that same area and back over the last couple of years. So, you know, I, I'm just af afraid to. So now we, we both walk with a cane, and I don't really need a cane, but I, it's security for me. Ha having that fear that I'm going to fall. And uh, I, I, I was using the cane for a while, and then I, I got to feeling good about it, and I could walk without it, and I didn't need it. I needed it for a short time after the last fall that I took because the lake was hurting me so much that I needed the cane to, to relieve the pain. But then I got some shots and stuff, and the, the knee got better, and, and you know, it, it's a, the, the, that knee is fine. But um, 
it's just that it was, it, you know, that, um, uh, but I got, I got to the point when I got the feeling that hey, I don't need the cane or at all. And I'm, I'm walking around, I'm feeling great, I'm feeling terrific, and all of a sudden we're taking a walk down the street and I take another plots. And Marjorie, when we walk down the street now, we hold each other's hand because she needs it and I kind of like the security of it. But every time I've fallen, I was holding her hand. So, you know, uh, yeah. Hey folks, uh, kids, if you're watching, this is what happens when you get older. You know, this is what happens when you get older. Well, let's bring in these people here who want to be on this pathetic excuse for a show. Uh, Brian Neary is there. He's in his car, I'm thinking. Am I right, Brian? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you're driving your, on your way home. Is that it? Yeah, we had like an all-day meeting and had dinner in Lodi, so I'm just leaving. Well, okay. So anyway, let me see here. Kevin Stopper says, Alex, can you see us in the waiting room? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, um, uh, yeah, there you are, Kevin. Yeah, I could see you all in the waiting room. I just was talking to the audience in general. So anyway, let me do this also. Yeah, so I wasn't sure could... whether you saw us or not because it was 12 minutes past and we weren't sure whether yeah. you were coming on or not. Yeah, well, sometimes I, I, you know, sometimes I just want to talk. You know, no worries. Talk. No worries. Your show. It's my show. It's all good. That's what I've heard. Just I've wanted to let you know I've, we was here. I've heard it's my show. I'm, you know. Yeah, we we let you do that. Yeah. Anyway, so. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. No, I, I, th I thank you, by the way, uh, to Alan, because he did send me that cane. You know, <laughs> but it's, it's a very, it's a very, uh, what we call a very medical looking cane. It, it, Which one is that? It's it just got, you know, it's a metal cane with the, you know, the grip on it. and, the, and I've so, got one that has a seat on it. With a what? A seat. What do you mean a seat? Yeah, you can fold it out and it's got a seat. You can sit on it. Yep. Yeah, because my problem is standing for a long time in one place. Oh, really? So if I stand for a long time. You didn't get me one with a seat, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> See? Got me in trouble, Kevin. That's right. Now yeah. you're in trouble. Well, you got 30 days. <laughs> yeah, well, I was thinking about actually going out and getting a walking stick. You know? I was going to get a couple at Costco the other day. It was 39 bucks for those two, you know, walking sticks. Oh, oh you mean oh, you mean for the, one of those things? Yeah, like they could use for hiking. Like it's you're walking. They're but carbon you, fiber. You They're like, really nice. You're walking, but you look like you should be skiing. You mean yeah, one exactly. Of those? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, and I don't need it. Uh, you know, I I can walk fine. I mean, no, my 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 real issue is standing for a long time in one place. If I stand there and talk to somebody for fifteen minutes or so, I get to the point where my legs just say, "You know what? Screw you. Sit down." You're how old now? Uh, I'll be 67 in a couple months. 67? Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Heading Getting for the there, big 7 huh? Getting there. Huh? Yeah. 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 Maybe it'll catch but, up to me. Yeah, pretty soon. You can just stop for a minute and I will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for the, uh, thank you again for the cane. It, it's uh it's a very nice cane. But Marjorie uses a cane now, too, because she's afraid of falling because she's lightheaded. And so we're both walking down the street with canes, and I'm thinking people are looking at us and going, you want look another at those one old her? farts, you know? <laughs> you want me to send her one, too? What? You want me to send her she one, She has too? one she likes, actually, that she's using, but she would probably wouldn't mind having one of those. But then... You have to send her a slightly different one than mine. What color is yours? Chrome or black? Uh, what the head? The handle? Yeah. Black. No, I mean the the the, the, the aluminum part. Oh, it's it's some, it's chrome. Yeah. Okay, some of them are painted black. Oh, okay. They, they also make. Tell me, want a hurricane? The hurricanes will stand up by themselves. They got three legs on the bottom. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know how. Here's what I know. Okay, so we have some people here. That's what I got? Well, we have one person here who knows how to use canes, right? Anybody else here a cane user in any way, shape, or form? 
have been. You have been. I okay. know. I have been when I had a torn. So disc. where do you adjust the cane? How high should you make it? I bring it all the way to the top, but I'm beginning to think that's not. No, you put too much rest. Yeah. Too much on your shoulder. Yeah, I know. So what? Where? How? How do you set those things? I run it right around my waist. <clears throat> okay, so the handles around your waist, so right around you know, not where you're reaching good. down for it, but you're you're kind of where you walk, yeah. where you walk. Boy, folks, is this not the kind of, of show you want to listen to? Really, you know, Kane one hundred and one. Kane one hundred and one. Didn't Trump do something today? What? Did Didn't Trump, Trump do something today? <laughs> I don't know. Let's ask Alan. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen the news. What did he do? I don't know. I'm just trying to get off the cane. Oh, oh I see. God. Okay. Oh, just because you're driving. You're, you're driving home from Lodi? <laughs> yeah. I'm going there yeah. tomorrow morning. We can't even see uh, you. We, we, well, hmm. we can see you a little bit. Now you went through some lights or something. Yeah. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Is anybody in the car I with you? I can't drive like this. No, I was no. going to say, if you're going to be there tomorrow morning, we'd go have breakfast. <laughs> no, uh, we're Wine and Roses. It's a nice nice little place they have for events and stuff. So it's nice. Good food. I think I better put my earphones on because I'm not hearing Brian that well. It's his dial up in the car. Yeah, it's his dial up in the car. Oh, there we go. Okay, now I'm 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 listening as I should, I guess. Uh, anyway, and uh, let's... oh, earthquake! You guys had a couple earthquakes today, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, you know. Well, you didn't. It didn't bother you, I'm sure. You just probably had fun uh, well, watching well, everybody else have uh, freak uh, out out there, uh, right? Well, here's uh, here here's what a guy from California does with an earthquake like that. I'm sleeping. And all of a sudden, I hear a little bit of a rumble. It wakes me up. I look at the door, and the door, which Marjorie has kind of closed, is shaking mm -hmm. like crazy. And I'm going, oh, it must be a real wind out there. I go back to sleep. <laughs> now that, that's You what know I, you're from California when yeah, you do that. <laughs> I, how many of you are in California? So we got one, two, uh, three people from California there and me. Okay. Or How many? Brian. Huh? Brian's Brian. You can't see him, but he's from California. I'm raising my hand. You can't see it. <laughs> yeah, Brian. Brian. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Yeah. How many of these five people have slept through uh, earthquakes? Many, many, many. <laughs> right. Everybody Probably going goes, to right now. Boy, did you feel that one this morning? And you go, what? <laughs> I didn't feel yeah. anything. You know, Californians sleep through earthquakes. Here in New York, we have this little tremor. It's a four eight, okay? You know, and everybody's going, "Oh my God, we had an earthquake!" Oh, and then the news people are saying, "See that uh, that DeVos, uh fell over off a table." Oh, really? Lester Holt comes on, breaking news, breaking news, and I'm going, oh, shit, Trump did something good today. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they're going, we just had a 4.7 earthquake. Now, going, you know, if this earthquake... Oh, Jesus, I'm going back to sleep. If this takes place in California, we wouldn't even hear about it. No. Mm -hmm. You know? What, what is Margie's favorite color? Hmm? I'll send her a cane that's colored, like yours. I don't know. What is it? I don't Blue? know her favorite color. I've been together for 20 years. You don't know her favorite color? No. Oh. Would she like a blue printed uh, flower thing or something? Oh, no. No flowers like that. She'd hate that, I think. Yeah. No flowers. <clears throat> Brown might be nice. Brown? Okay. It, yeah. Brown might be nice. All right, good. I'll find her one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think you was want. There, what was there any damage? Was there any damage over there, New York? Oh, in New York? Oh, uh, yeah. I think a vase fell over in New Jersey. <laughs> I saw some videos of pictures falling off walls. And oh stuff my like God! Terrible. Oh, t Tony sent me a text at eight thirty this morning. Now, well, here's the thing. Okay, 
It was. I don't I think it was later than eight thirty this morning. I think it was about close. No, to well, it was five thirty your time. Yeah, thirty my okay, time. Okay, okay. The other way. The other way. But anyway, uh, we. Eleven thirty. Yeah, you know, I I've never been. Uh, I'm I, I I when it comes to this sort of thing, I go, geez, you know, come on, don't be such pussies for crying out loud, you know. I mean, four point eight. Okay. What's a four? How 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 bad is a four point eight? All the guys from California. How about you? No big, no four point eight. No. Yeah, we don't get out of the chair until it hits five. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, look around till five. Yeah. Yeah. I was a little mad that I was asleep because I do enjoy earthquakes. I think we all do if we want to admit it. Because they're kind of fun. They're kind of fun. Yeah. It's like riding some kind of cheap ride at Coney Island. You know, and uh, 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 you know we we just kind of like uh, go we did you and then everybody of course loves to talk about it all day long. Did you feel that last night? You know. Oh yeah, it's like on Facebook around here. It's like oh yeah. You know, I go I get on Facebook and I go earthquake go yeah yeah and they all go well I don't know I was doing this I was doing that I was doing this I go you fools. Well, I was with my girlfriend who she and I had broken up and uh, we were. Uh, together this day and we were driving down to visit Darrow and all of a sudden it hit and I, what was weird about it is I felt that my uh, what happened is I was going downhill and it was like my car felt like it was I put on the brakes that what it was I hit the brakes and it still kept going it was bouncing down the street okay and then we went back in the marina and went home. And we spent the, the whole night there. And I got to tell you something. And I, 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 you people here in New York didn't have the benefit of this because there was no rubble, okay, to speak of. But I found that the best sex I've ever had in my life was the night of the Loma Prieta earthquake. <laughs> uh, there is something that I call a rubble fuck that really is for some reason hot and i asked uh, who did i ask about it? i asked some kind of sexual psychologist or somebody who did i ask about it and he dr. said Ruth? no it wasn't dr. Dr. Yeah, dr. Ruth. <laughs> no no um you know she just has the shakes from being old um uh, uh, so uh, uh, I'm I'm trying to remember who it was, but they said, yeah, you know, that's a known One, uh, that's two, a known fact three. that people have a tendency to want to go out and have sex, have sex when there's a tragedy like that, <clears throat> uh, because it's our desire to perpetuate the, the the species. It's some kind of animal thing in us, and I it was great sex. It was just the best sex. Uh, Just happy to be alive. We, yeah, well, seven seven twenty three. It's uh, seven twenty three, yeah. and then there was one at eight twenty, and then there was one at. What? Well, also no, they said, said they had two or three of them. Yeah, they and then did, they came in the afternoon after that. They said Chester, today they had two or three. Ten fourteen, ten eighteen. Do you know? But you know, Loma Prieta. Do you know? Because I get a, I get an earthquake alert. Yeah. yeah. And it'll tell me everything over three point zero. Oh, or oh, so you you're looking at yours for Oh, I, yeah, I get I get them. Yeah. Well, and I looked at it this morning when it came across. I went, oh, earthquake in New Jersey, and I threw it back on my on my on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. I mean, the only thing four point eight nothing. <laughs> well, the only thing big about it is is that it is New York after all, and we don't normally get earthquakes here. Although, yeah, well, I didn't even think about it, but I was looking. at, You know, I'm counting the ones in California. There's like six or seven just today. Well, do you yeah. know after the Loma Prieta, how many we used to have every day? Oh yeah, yeah. two three hundred. Yeah. Aftershocks. Yeah. Here yep. they got two or three aftershocks and they went batshit. Yeah. Oh my God, we had a. I better go run under the bed, you know. And they, I had to go driving that crap. It was no fun because oh. all the roads were messed up. And, oh yeah. Well, I mean, it, you got to admit it was an adventure. Yeah. And so I had a. Loma big, Prieta was a well, bitch. I had a big crack in my wall from it. <laughs> And then when they came in, they had a couple of cracks in various walls, right? And when they, uh, after it was all over, they came in, they said, we're going to come in and re repaint the walls and fix the cracks. And I said, okay, but leave that one. 
And there was a big one that went up in my living room that was, was mm-hmm. and they said, why? Because I said, I want something to remember it by. So when people <laughs> come over, I can point and say, see, that was the Loma Prieta quake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I, uh, till the time I left that house, I, uh, they fixed all the other cracks. The only damage that I had was I had a bookshelf uh, collapse. And that was about it, you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas the house next to me was practically missing, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. It, it's a very strange thing about the earthquakes and things like that because what happens is they, they're, they're not, it's like you can have a house here and then a house here and a house here and then the houses in between them are all missing. You know, well, I don't know. What am I talking about? You know, Tom knows what I'm talking about. Kevin knows what I'm talking about. Alan knows what I'm talking about. Um, like tornadoes, you know, they take a path through yeah. through somewhere and they can take out a, a strip mm-hmm. of, ro- you know, houses and leave the other ones just standing. Well, I, well, I, you know, the wildfires respond the same way. They'll go yeah, through a, same thing. a subdivision, and then there'll be a house right next to a pile of yep. assets. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm also beginning nature's to Nature's way of saying, screw you. Well, I'm beginning to think all this is part of nature saying, fuck you. You know? And saying, yeah. you know, we're reclaiming this thing for ourselves. You know, because, I mean, come on. An earthquake in New Jersey... Are you kidding me? And then they started bringing up the whole thing about the weather and whether how that's affecting it. And everybody always used to say, "Oh, it's earthquake weather out here." Well, in, in, in New Jersey, there's no earthquake. In New weather. Jersey, you can't tell when there was an earthquake because that that uh, state has nothing but rubble anyway. <laughs> so, oh, Darlene's gonna call and yell at you. Yes, Alan. <laughs> uh, um, you're. Uh... Uh, Marjorie's cane there with the brown handle uh, yeah, yeah. will arrive right. on Monday. Will arrive on Monday if she says Amazon Prime just sent me a message. If she says to me, "I hate brown," I'm going to say, "Well, that's the one I chose for you." Yep, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Better than the blue flowers, I guess, huh? What? Well, no, don't uh, do that. Oh, she wouldn't. She'd hate that. No, I didn't. No, I sent what you said. Brown, mm-hmm. brown. It's made by the same company that makes yours, Medline. They're a good. They're a good company. Medline. Oh, the same one that makes Medline. Money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll tell her. I, I won't tell her it's coming. I'll just. Show. Okay, it'll be there Monday. Yeah, yeah. Look, the effect. The, the earthquake affected Tony. Lost his hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Did, did you get a haircut? Yeah, you had when you had the earthquake. haircut. Did you, Tony? Hmm. I I was actually in the chat when the earthquake hit. I didn't even know oh. it. Uh. It rumbled. <laughs> I and he said that you just wanted a quarter inch off. He took everything off. Right? <laughs> the guy who was sweeping the hair, Tom, Alex, he speaks Polish. It was his cousin. So he goes, he speaks. I says, what's going on? He goes, so he stepped away from me. He says, he, says, he said it was, it was, we had an earthquake. I says, I didn't feel anything. I go, because I was in the chair. And then at the end, I went from, my haircut went from $20 see, see, when I used to go to them, these, like four months, see these months pussies ago, in to 25 This is a 4.8 quake, okay? <laughs> my brother, yeah, called me. I couldn't get the phone. I mean, geez. Uh, it, yeah, it's like, holy and shit. And I'm turning on the TVs, and then there, it's all they're reporting. And, and then there's somebody out in New Jersey going, yeah, there's a vase that fell off a shelf here. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! Stop the presses! Let's go to the right. big story about the earthquake. I mean, well, I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but you know the difference and between stop a, talking about it. Well, what's the difference between uh, <laughs> anybody here scientifically? Uh, 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 Charlie, yeah, yeah. he sounded like uh, Larry David mm-hmm. there for a second. Uh, Charlie, what is the difference in 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 force between a Four eight and a six nine, which was the Loma Prieta quake. Oh, huge. Well, I, yeah, that's just a gigantic difference. It's a logarithmic scale, so it's probably about fifty times stronger. Yeah. Between those or, two. You know, it's kind of like uh, Crocodile Dundee. You want an earthquake? This is an earthquake. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know. So we lost, you know, some houses. Yeah. Uh, part of a bridge, you know, stuff like that, and probably somebody lost a base. Yeah, 
when they well, Alex, my sister was in school because she teaches the Nest program you know, in IS seventy eight. So she texted me. The kids were the kids are really intelligent. They were crying in the class. They were Miss Jurgens, we're gonna die. He said, No, you're gonna be okay. They were crying. Oh, God. They didn't know. So, oh God. <laughs> yeah. You people. Are, she has a little kid that's like super small. Barack. You, you New Yorkers. He is so intelligent. You New Yorkers is such pussies. Yeah, the kids were crying. She's got to call them the eight Especially kids. Especially if they're from Queens. Oh, the kid is a genius. I mean, oh yeah. The mother's well, a doctor. The father's a lawyer. This kid is like forget it, Tony. Yeah, but there, <laughs> there hasn't been that. there hasn't been a shake as bad as the Loma Prieta has there since. No. No, not in the Bay Area. How big? Yeah, we're was almost ten years. When you started. wait a minute, you're breaking up a well, little. I was bit watching there. the World Series. That was that bad. The, yeah. uh, the Bay Bridge yeah. oh, yeah. broke, right? Yeah. It did snap. It it did made, but part of it, a section of it like collapsed it. in on That's itself. Like, yeah. yeah, it was the top level, and then it uh, kind of went boom. Seven point one is what the earthquake was here. In the wow. There was somebody driving a car at that point that went down into it, and I think he was killed, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Several people were killed. Well, with... a lot of people were killed. But oh yeah, the the, the uh, freeway that was double deck in Oakland going towards the Bay Bridge collapsed. Too. The Cypress. Well, the Cypress. Cypress. Thank yeah. you, Kevin. I was yeah, on both you know of them before it happened. Here, here was you would have really heard of a tragedy, but that day was the day that the it was a it was a uh, what do you call it? the the base the, the Bay Area the World Series World Series, World Series. where yeah, I remember yeah one day it was on yeah. one side of the bay and the next day it was on another side of the bay. Well, this particular day, it was at the Candlestick in San Francisco, which is in San Francisco. If mm -hmm. it had been in the uh, in in uh, in who was Oakland. It? Oakland Oakland Oakland, uh, there would have been some a massive amount of deaths. But as a result, there was hardly anybody on that Cypress Expressway. But it did kill yeah. about, what, 10 people, 20 people? I don't know how many. Yeah. Oh. I know one. Hmm? Oh, really? I know one person. You knew one person? Yeah. yeah, you ever seen the picture of the Cypress smashed together and the, the, the truck that was squished? Yeah. The semi that was, yeah, uh, yeah he, I knew that guy. Really? Yeah, he worked for uh, the company that my ex worked for. Cal Express. Well, we were lucky with that earthquake. We didn't have more deaths. And then the kid, the lady. I, I think it's the World Series was my going kids. On. Huh? What did you say? Uh, what did you say, Brian? I mean, uh, uh, Kevin. No, I was saying that the lady that uh, used to watch my kids, her relative from Weaverville mm -hmm. died or actually no he was found and then died he was squished in between them they pulled him out of the cavities and then he died a couple of wow. days later well the worst you know i gotta say you got a him. lot of brave firefighters that went in between those two sections while after shocks were going off to save yep. people well you know i mean i i was uh, out of work when that happened I, they just let me go from live one uh, from live 105 and uh, I they didn't do it again, or we would have had another. Big well, I was looking for work, and all of a sudden, this thing happened, and I went, "That's it. I'm not going to find a job." <laughs> you know, it's no <laughs> nobody's hiring right now. Different job. <clears throat> yeah. So that's when I went. That to part of the south of Market, the street opened up in the middle of the street, like did, on did it Fifth oh. or Sixth Street near like Harrison or something. That's what would scare me in an earthquake. Ground opened up underneath you. Ooh. We were driving. A whole stack of we pictures were, we from the next day. We were driving back down. Um, no, my <clears throat> girlfriend and I, or ex-girlfriend at that moment, <laughs> the one that I broke up with eleven times in eleven oh. years. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> she she uh, we were, were driving back, we, and we go down to Visadero, and we're driving down the street, and uh, she says to me, "Look over there, uh, you see that." There's a there's a whole uh, uh, floor missing or something off of that building or something, and I said, well, look over there. There's no building at all, and oh, one, this, there was a building that had completely collapsed, you know. And then and that's we, what she said, wait a minute, that was my house. When we got down to my <laughs> apartment, we pulled in in front of the yeah. apartment house, and the curb, we couldn't open the door to the car because the curb was so high. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. 
And then uh, I remember that uh, we were decided we would go over to my business manager's place, that that seemed to be a good idea, okay? Get out of, out of uh, the uh, marina. And I got a call from, uh, and no, anyway, so we started going, and all of a sudden I saw that there was a street where there were some fires going on and so on, and I stopped the car and went out to look and see if I could help. And my girlfriend, who I always thought was the brave one of the two of us, she was the sturdy one, she was the sports mm -hmm. one, she was the one that in, the, in times of danger would probably drag me from the fire, right? She's going, where are you going? We gotta get across the bridge, we gotta get across the bridge. And I'm going, I wanna see if I can help people. You know, and I went out and I helped a little bit and then I got back in the car and we started driving across the bridge and she's going, oh, what if there's another earthquake while we're going across the bridge? And I'm going, <laughs> and I'm, I am cool as a cucumber. I couldn't believe myself. <laughs> you would think, you know me, okay? You've known mm -hmm. me from doing this show. Do you think I'm really the kind of person that isn't going to panic in an earthquake? Yeah, I would be nervous myself. I'm not cool going to as a cucumber. When you get to the other side of the bridge, you stop the car, mm. go to the trunk, and get the ball gag and put it in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was just amazed, you know. Uh, but then we came back, and as we're lying there in bed, we can see the lights from the flames outside, <laughs> and the yeah. smoke is in the air, and uh, we uh, we uh, screwed like crazy, you know. Oh, you, you can see the smoke. All the way over here in Fremont. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. Uh, um, um, well, of course we have we have Jeff. Jeff, mm -hmm. you didn't feel it this morning, did you? I didn't feel it. My friends did, who were pretty close to us. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why. I was always walking around the house making noises, and square, <laughs> making yeah. pants, How, afraid that the house was going to blow up. Josh, did you feel it all where you were? <laughs> well, no, I'm, the reason I'm asking is because it was felt for a great amount of, it was almost up to the Canadian border. Really? Yeah, so I just wondered if Josh maybe felt it where he uh, was. I was at work and, uh, yeah. you know, it's so loud in there and so many machines running and stuff like that. I'd you know, ask the people who people from California if they felt it but they would have slept through it so you know we're about yeah. we're probably about 600 miles west maybe yeah but you're you're something maybe a little less than that yeah. actually but anyway so they're sitting around even the news tonight they were just going on and on and on about it and I just went this is you know this is absurd you know leave me alone let me know when there's really an earthquake yeah, Tony. There you go, Tony. Text me when there's a real earthquake. When that hat falls down, then you can text me again. When my house is on top of me, I'll text you. It's there you go. Hey, wait a minute. He is still texting you. Didn't you have it? Yeah, I got it. I got a text at eight forty three. I think this was important. You want to know about forty three. How did you get a how did you get a haircut? Oh no, okay. It been to begin late. with, to begin with I was in the chair when it happened, I didn't feel it though. To begin with, and... you're saying he you thought he might want to hear about it. It was important. Do you consider an earthquake in New Jersey important, uh, uh Alan? No, not at all. Yeah. Hmm. That, that that's what he said in the text. I said, you know, the, did you did you miss something the time here? I showed I sent him the I, I was walking myself safe. I, 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 I thought it was a friend. I said, let me tell him I'm safe. In terms of the news. I mean, I'll, I tell, thought you, it was I'll tell you the time that I got a call about something that went on and it was worth it. Okay. I'm sleeping. It's about 830 in the morning, maybe. Maybe it's a little earlier than that. Oh, just, yeah. yeah. And I get, a call, I get a call from Shecky. I'll never forget And that. he says... Are you watching television right now? I said, no, I just, I'm sleeping, you know. He said, uh, turn on your television set. I went, oh, okay. And I didn't know what he was, and I looked at it and I went, that's the World Trade Center, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I said, it's on fire? It caught fire? He said, no, a plane crashed into it. And as we're talking, Another a second plane crashes into it. And I looked 
I said to Shecky immediately, I guess this isn't an accident. You know? <laughs> but that that I was worth that was, was worth it. Work. What? I was at work and they told us over the two way radio. We're under attack. I'm like I'm look, I get out of the car and I'm looking around and I'm like, where? You know, the dispatcher didn't tell us that it was in New York. Well, listen, <laughs> the, the, the day will come when you guys out in California will be attacked in some way, shape, or form, some basic tragedy like that, and New Yorkers can give you the same crap we're giving New Yorkers now about earthquakes. You know, mm -hmm. oh, you're a bunch of pussies. You know, they only got one building of yours. <laughs> so. <laughs> But, uh, so Trump tried to order up a new judge today, huh? Oh, really? <laughs> what, what, from, oh, yeah, there is Judges or Us, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, what do you mean he tried to order up a new judge? He decided he didn't like the judge, so he wanted a new one. Which one? Which, uh, on what trial? Which trial? Uh, um, the one the man uh, he tried to get Merchant out. Um, the one for the, I think it's the... New York? The, uh, the Washington the one, yeah. The Washington one. Yeah. Or, or the New York one, no. The New York one. Oh, okay, the Stormy Daniels thing. Yeah. 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 Well, but he didn't manage to get the person thrown out, right? No, no. They do everything they can to try and slow the process up. That's yeah, that's exactly what he's trying to do. Yeah, you know, and, and the judges are now getting very tired of this and going, look, you've had your chances, okay? Mm -hmm. You can only say so many times do you feel that you have presidential immunity and you have this and that and, you know, it's not right because blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, that's what he's always done, I suppose. I mean, that's what he does all the time and he continues to do it and they let him do it. Well, he, you ought to just tell him to shut up and wait for your trial date, and we'll see you then. I like guess they do I guess everybody else. Josh, he yep. has the right to do it, right? You know. He well, has... yeah. I mean, the, you can ask for yeah. recusal. I mean, you know, but I think they asked for a recusal, but it's the second time they've asked. I think they're getting a little uh, this, tired. This particular judge. All, all so. these judges are getting a little tired of his antics. Oh yeah. I think even his little pal down in Florida <clears throat> is probably sick of his antics. Yeah, he said to dismiss the charges the other day, and the judge in Florida said nope. Yeah, so, you know, it's a question of, we just want one of these trials to start while he's running for office. Well, the criminal one in New York or Washington is supposed to start in a week, right? New York, 15. Yeah. Now, my question is, if... Um, he say loses that trial and it's a criminal trial by the way so he's found guilty of a criminal act do you think that's going to affect his the the, the his uh, his chances as being president or do you think nothing's going to change i don't think it's going to change anything can he still run josh well, run. wait a minute. Can he, Josh? Yeah, he can run. Theoretically, he can run from prison. Yeah, I was going to say, I think he could, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. That would be cute. Okay. okay. Just think, Alex, if he goes to prison, they could tell the prisoners, even you can be the president and be in jail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's hope. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's and, and all the prisoners that uh, Trump for president. Well, I, you know, it, yeah, but you yeah. know what's going to be terrible for Trump in prison? Mm -hmm. Going to be the his most hair. What? Well, that is hair. Who his said? Hair. <laughs> yeah, how does he? I, I want to see. I want to see his hair oh. after prison. Did he? Is that hair? My mother used to get a hair frosted. Is that like a frost on his hair? You think that? No, like that, that's that's something else, and we don't know exactly what it is. Because I never want to. He had to get it dyed. My mother used to get her hair frosted. He got a case of that 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 spray colored stuff you get during yeah. Halloween. That is. He got a deal on Lady Auburn Auburn gets so the thing that things. That is the most excessive comb over in history. Oh yeah, yeah you're right about that. It's terrible. He He's probably bald right there. He's so bald. What? I'm hoping he dies. Really, I really do. Well, don't say that. I want to wake up. Don't I want to wake that. up and my mother laugh at him. <laughs> Don't she say, hated him don't out. Say that. 
Don't say. I know, but I would get a joy out of it. I just want to hear it on 10, 10 wins him, when I roll I over. I want him to Breaking live news. a long, long time in yeah. prison. Why? So he can spend a lot of oh, time yeah, in prison. Yeah, that would be good. See? You don't want him dying. You don't want anything like that happening. Well, if you told me prison, you're right. I would go with the prison, Alex. You would go with yeah. the prison. I, I, I want to hear that. I would, I would love to see a bomb boss. I, new, I do a reality show for that for two minutes. That's the new warmer, kinder uh, Tony. And you're right. Let him, let's, oh, that would be so. Imagine if sons have to visit him in jail each week. That would be great. I don't <laughs> when you know. Get no, no, I no. want to hear that he got raped in the middle of the night. Look, he's not going to get raped. Who wants to rape him? No, oh, the yeah. Secret Service probably still has to protect him. Yeah. You know something? I think the Secret Service would actually have to live in prison with him. Really? Yes. Yeah. I don't I'd know. I'd an extra for that. Boy. New precedents. I'd want time and a half for that. Yeah, but maybe, I mean, maybe they'll do like the drug dealer, whatever his name was. I would imagine. I himself. would imagine if he is found guilty and given mm. so many years, whatever, it would be of home confinement because I don't think they can put him in a prison in any effective way. Uh, it would just cost the prison too much money just in protection. Yeah, you're right. With all that protection, he'd be like, forget Plus, it. Plus, the worst part is going to be the number of other... Uh, I mean, I don't think that any of the the, uh, the uh, convicts in the prison are going to want to hurt him because they might want him to pardon them someday. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's true. Sure. You never know. <laughs> don't, don't hit me. I'll, I'll pardon you, okay? Here, here you go. Here's your pardon. Yeah, then he'll wind up pardoning everybody and be the only one left in the prison. But, yeah, the whole place to himself. I think I think they would do home confinement on something. Like that. Don't you, Josh? I mean, would it be practical to take him and put him in a prison somewhere? Uh, well, I'm sure they could do it. I mean, I I don't know that they could do home confinement for certain convictions because they're not going to do it for anybody else. Right. You know, and, How about I mean, an ankle bracelet? You know, I mean, oh, for, I mean, I think that kind of sentence is handed out for, you know, certain smaller crimes and smaller sentences and things like that. But I mean, if you're, you know, if you're convicted of a federal crime mm -hmm. and sentenced to 10 years or whatever, I mean, they, you know, they can't let you do that at home if you ask me because they don't do it for anybody else. So... Yeah, I like what I like what Alan just said. Ankle bracelet. It's not an ankle bracelet. That's what a what you give your girlfriend yeah, in high GPS school. GPS bracelet, huh? A, it's a, yes, it is. It's a GPS bracelet that fits around your ankle. Mm -hmm. But is it called a bracelet? I don't no, know. It's an not an called ankle a bracelet. I don't know what you call it. It's a, it's it's so you can track the person. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, since he's in the dark, I can't. I keep forgetting that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, Brian. Brian is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a hard time with names tonight. I'm sorry. I'm just so out of it. It's ridiculous. See, what's really happening is Brian is sleeping on the way home. The car's on on uh, auto uh, drive. Autopilot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, no, don't, don't forget because I won't have time to remind you after tonight. That on Monday is the big eclipse of the sun. Yep. That's right. And even here, we're going to have like 90%, yep. which is pretty good. Don't look at it. You're blind. Remember, they used to say that in school class. I, I have. We, Marjorie case. got us some glasses. Yeah, now, without, what's, the, what's the weather supposed to be? Echo. Oh, let me look up what, the Hold on a second. Echo, nice. what's the weather supposed yeah, to be like on Monday? I think it's nice. On Monday, April 8th. You'll see lots of sun and can expect a high of 60 degrees. Lots of sun on Monday. Oh, except at 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> the end of the world. No, it's gonna be too. Can't yeah. see anything with these glasses on. It's yep. two 2:15 in the afternoon, if I'm not mistaken, on Monday. So yeah, it's 10. Well, the three hours difference. It's 10:15 here yep. in California is when it starts. So yeah, that. One, uh, when is it supposed yeah. to? Do you know, Charlie? I saw the last one. It's just a blob in the sky. Yeah, it's a little different. This one. What? 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 what uh, Charlie? What? Well, the last one was what? Eighty percent? Ninety percent? Yeah, I saw a full a lunar eclipse in the Mediterranean when I was on vacation years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Two thousand seventeen was the last big one, and 
apparently you can see it about 25 miles from totality. This one you can see it pretty clear in the high 90%, 100 miles on either side of it. Yeah, it's much wider uh, yes. path of totality. I got pictures of it over, I went over to Los Banos. Yeah. Over by the lake there, and it was pretty easy to see. That 2017 uh, eclipse was when Trump was looking at the sun without any yeah. laughter. Right. Yeah. yeah. But that wasn't a big one, was it, for him? No, he probably does it every day. But he does it every day. Yeah. When he when he drinks his uh, Lysol. Yeah. 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 Well, he, what we'll do is I have a show that day on Monday at 4 o'clock so all the people can come on and then say how it looked where they were. Because I think our friend Paul is in uh, in Ohio. Isn't it going to be good in Ohio? Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. Oh, yeah, that's right. I heard Niagara <laughs> Falls. It's be huge in Niagara Falls. Yeah. Cleveland also is right in the middle of it, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, it is right in the middle of it. Wayne from the other show yep. lives there, and he says that if it's overcast or cloudy or stormy, he's going to be an atheist. You won't believe in God anymore. Well, I mean, <laughs> even if even if it's uh, even if it's like overcast or whatever, you're going to see almost total darkness. It's going to get dark. Yeah. It's going to get yeah. dark like night. It's going to get dark. Yeah. In New York, you get skyscrapers, so the clouds will probably be below some of those. No, but it says it's going to be very sunny on on Monday. Oh, okay, good. So good. you know. Now, Tony, I'm, I'm sure we'll call you. I'm wondering where the sun is going to be that time. I'm going to have to look tomorrow and see we'll where the sun right is. Then. Yeah, because we may have to go down. Uh, well, I could go up on the roof, but I'm not going up there. That scares me. I think maximum is supposed to be around 2.15 in your place. Yeah. Maximum is 2.15. Is it maximum at 2.15 or is it is it just starting at 2.15? Um, starting at 10.15 in California. Okay, yeah, so when is it? When is it? It goes for two hours. It, 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 yeah, but when is it at its prime? I guess it would be at its in prime. In the middle. Yeah, yeah, in the middle. So it's from from here. It's from twelve fifteen to two fifteen. So it'd be one fifteen to three fifteen where you are. Right, and so probably around two o'clock, it'll be in one hundred percent totality. Wow, yeah. Well, that's uh, so that's good. It's, it'll be, it's going it's to be fun. pretty dark where you are because that's 90 percent of the sun's going to be covered. Is it ninety here or is it eighty? I can't remember. I thought it was ninety. Maybe it's ninety. Yeah, I think it's I 90. My, it's pretty it's close. It's it can, I, yeah. it goes, but, but don't it's worry, you'll know. You'll know. You'll know. Right when, you'll, know you'll know when it's happening, um, um, uh, Alan, because you'll hear from Tony. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can't see it, but I'm texting you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for, for, well, you're, Alex, you should be able you should be able to get close to 100 percent because the middle of it, the, you know, the actual line goes right through Buffalo. Yep. Really? Oh wow. Yep. yep. So you should be able to get a real clear picture. That's what's rare about this uh, eclipse is that it's going to be visible to more people. It's going to more than more than three times as many people visible than the one in 2017. There's so many population centers, Buffalo, Dallas, Indianapolis. I mean, all these are right in the middle of the eclipse. Well, thank if you. we can get Trump to look at it without glasses, then after that day, he'll be walking with a cane, you know, a blind skin cane. How many more? You want to get all, all the rest of your uh, Trump? I like the Trump. I didn't now. start it. Once again, you brought up Trump. <laughs> he did. I true. Alan did not start it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a dream tonight. Alan's going to be telling jokes on Trump. Some of them are funny, and then all right, I didn't get that one. I, I'm just going to tell everybody on my on my uh, Facebook page <clears throat> that the uh, the height of the you know the um, the eclipse is going to be at two thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> get them up early, yeah. Be in total <laughs> darkness. Be in total darkness. <laughs> you don't sit exactly. That'd be a cruel trick. Man, it was really dark. <laughs> Be careful because Tony will read that and go, "Oh my God, I gotta get outside." I'll be up at two thirty. Where? be in the yard. Be the light going on. That's the alarm. <laughs> Open and, the and, 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 and uh, uh, um, Josh, you're not in any part of the country where you where you're gonna really see it a lot, or is it gonna be? Sure, it is. Yeah, runs right up it's through, right up through Ohio. Oh, really? Yeah. 
He's going to be in the 90s at least, 90% coverage at oh, least. Oh, yeah. Cleveland is right in total to tell. Yeah. You know, right, he goes through right through Cleveland into Lake Erie. Well, if you got the glasses, you know, you can actually see the moon crossing across the uh, the sun, you know. Uh, and uh, Or you can watch it on YouTube an hour later. Oh, I'm sure it's going to be all over the Internet. Yeah. Videos of now, it, a yeah. lunar eclipse is different, right? How does the lunar eclipse work? It is it. It's not the sun going across the moon, is it? The moon, the moon is going the across Earth. The moon's moon? going behind the Earth, so the Earth yeah. is between the, oh, okay. the moon and the sun the during the lunar eclipse. And so that's what causes yeah. that eclipse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, well, we got about a. Well, a couple of minutes left here. Anybody have anything exciting to say? Uh, we haven't had people been able to talk to Josh much tonight because there's really not much happening politically except for uh, the situation in Israel and the fact that our president is, uh, you know, it suddenly decided to do something about it. And that, do you feel he's doing enough, uh, Josh? I think he's doing as uh, a lot of what he can. I mean, I think people who say that he hasn't been doing it, I mean, what, what do they want him to do? Yeah. <laughs> well, Bob Israel. Is, well what, no, 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 what you could do, what you could do is not say, hey, I want you to get stop going into Gaza and killing people and then send him a whole bunch of weapons <laughs> in, in the same day that you told him that. You know, I, ju yeah. I just don't, I think that we, you just say, Listen, you're supposed to get a lot of money for weapons from us and a lot of weapons from us. You're not getting them because you're killing people with them. And we don't want to be a party to that. But uh, I mean, there's a possibility of that, but I'm quite sure that what they're doing offline to the public is far different than, you know, the public base that's being put on it. I mean... Look, the Americans killed a lot of civilians in Iraq and Afghanistan on accident. It it does happen. It is a war. And you know Yeah, the only difference was in this case these people from this food project actually let the Israelis know that they were yeah. traveling. They knew where they were gonna be. Well, maybe the, the food Israelis was, accepted and, and, it was a mistake. And I love Israel's excuse on the whole thing. Well, we're really sorry it was an accident. No, it wasn't an accident because there happens to be a war there, and the reason there's a war there is because you're bombing the shit out of the place. You know, so, I don't know. Hey, I got to play a thing. Uh, but, you know, we, we could have gotten into that tonight, but that would have been, we would have gone around in circles on that. Yeah. So, you know, because uh, uh, some people agree with me, some people disagree with me. Those who agree with me, don't, who agree with me, thank you so much, and those who don't, fuck you. Anyway, sorry, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, hey, uh, uh, I want to say good night to Brian. I can see his hand there, I think. <laughs> I think. Give us the finger, just so we know you're okay. Oh, my there, God. There, that, there. Oh, that's not a finger. That's gross. Oh. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Appreciate it. You too, uh, Alan. And and thank you for all, all the canes and stuff like that, you know. Uh, and uh, 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 thanks to uh, Josh for being here and Charlie and uh, Tom. Good to see you again, Tom. Whenever I see that you're here, I feel I must have done something right, you know. And uh, I just felt sorry for you because you said you were so depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, thank you. Yeah, you guys make me laugh. You make me laugh. Especially Tony makes me laugh. I don't want to admit that, but he does make me laugh. <laughs> See? But with that haircut. I think it's... That I know. Haircut, Alex, $25 for so this thing. Oh, I thought you said paid twenty five dollars to get the hair back. Anyway, hey, listen, we're running out of time here. I got to see you all later. Bye, everybody. Uh, give me a big, big, big wave of goodbye. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, there they go, folks. I got to go. I'll see you back here on Monday at uh, four o'clock for the uh, 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 the uh, uh, Monday show, the pop up show, and that'll be on Facebook. And then I'll be back here again, where we always are at uh, 10.30 uh, here on Gabnet 
Uh, and uh, that'll be on, on uh, Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. So long.